Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Uh, title of the video? Video 38, something about reading comprehension. <laughs> Reading comprehension, comprehensible input, intensive immersion, extensive immersion, you've probably heard these terms thrown about throughout the interwebs. But what do they really mean? Is it actually important that I know what they mean? Or are they just some fancy schmancy terms that make us feel smarter about our knowledge of how language acquisition works? My name is Bianca and today we'll be talking about reading. You may love reading or hate reading, but whatever you feel about the 20 benefits of reading to make you super duper smart, definitely backed by science. We do have to acknowledge that reading is one of the major target areas of learning a language. A lot of content is limited by our ability to read. Reading stories strings words together into a cohesive storyline that dives into character motivations, actions, feelings, and explanations. You get a mix of dialogues and character descriptions, world building that not only immerses yourself in the fictional world, but also helps you to empathize with the characters. You place yourself in the story, you build a connection to the story. Was I the only person that waited for my Hogwarts letter to come in the mail as a child? <laughs> Reading can be incredibly enjoyable, but it can also be super tedious and boring. How can that be? Okay, picture yourself back in high school, you're in an English class, perhaps taking AP Lit or AP Line, and you're reading excerpts of Romeo and Juliet and are just tuning out completely. The only way your teacher can get you to actually read the material is by giving daily reading quizzes from obscure parts so you can't spark notes it. My English teachers were pretty brutal growing up. And that was me in high school. I absolutely hated reading Shakespeare. Why was that? I just didn't get it. I didn't understand what was going on. Oh Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Aside, shall I hear more or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy, thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What is a Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? And pardon my inaccurate iambic pentameter in reading of that, but you gotta love me some roundabout Shakespeare. And there's a ton of people that love this type of poetic prose that plays with that said iambic pentameter that I screwed up. It's a very complex construction that really fits and enhances a live stage performance which is what it was written for. But I'm not in Shakespearean times. I'm not in a theater, clearly. And this is just really hard to comprehend. The way that it's written is just too hard for me. The complex and interwoven concepts were so above my interests for little old high school me. And this idea of an independence beyond family title and lineage is a very abstract thing. And because I didn't understand it, I just wasn't really interested in reading it. Hence the failed attempts at spark noting the material for my daily English quizzes. But then I read The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is to this day one of my favorites. I read ahead of class, noticed the little details that made the story more colorful. The reading was challenging enough that I learned new ways of phrasing ideas, new words, new sentence constructions, but not too difficult that I spent so much time trying to decipher what the hell the point was. I was so enamored by the story that it didn't even feel like reading. Have you felt that experience before? Complete immersion in a story. You remember random details, days, months, years after you've read the book. You remember character descriptions, motivations, redemption arcs. There's a reason why Zuko's redemption arc is still talked about to this day, even though Avatar The Last Airbender aired when I was a child. It was compelling, it was thought provoking, but it wasn't overly complicated. And that's what comprehensible input is in a nutshell. Enjoyable reading is built upon this framework. You can't get through reading in your native language, let alone your target language where you have the added struggle of not understanding the majority of the page sometimes if you aren't reading something that is both comprehensible and compelling. It's why textbooks feel so dry to so many of us. They are comprehensible, but not compelling. That's why picking up a book you read back in middle school in your native language is so hard in your target language. It's compelling, but not comprehensible. 
And in order to read, you need a mix of both comprehensible input and compelling stories to keep you reading, to keep you immersed, and to keep you learning. You want to build up emotional connections to the characters, but how can you do that if you're bored and just want to put the book down and watch TV? Or if you're so caught up in looking up 90% of the words on the page? It's not impossible, but it's gonna be pretty hard, and I know that because I've done exactly that. At the beginning of March, I made this plan to read The Little Prince. It should be fairly easy, right? I mean, I read it as a child. Isn't that what the general advice is? Read children's books because they're easier, right? Well, tell me if you know the word for jungle or boa constrictor, digestion, geography, golf, or politics, China. neckties in your target language. Probably not. And those words are just in the first chapter of The Little Prince. Children's books tend to have fantastical language to keep a child interested and help them to develop a love for reading. But what does a child reading The Little Prince have that you, presumably an adult, does not have? Well, according to the target age and demographic of the book, between 7 to 77 years of language acquisition under their belt. A child at age 7 probably knows more than you, a learner of the language. I mean, they are fluent at that point. So what is step one to learning how to read? Set proper expectations. Just because a chapter is three pages long like The Little Prince and is targeted to children does not mean that it will be a walk in the park. I tried to go through a chapter every two days in The Little Prince, and I even wrote in the post that this is not supposed to be an intensive study plan, and look at what happened. I overestimated my abilities and underestimated children's content, and the day behind schedule turned into two days and three days, and then snowballed into I just can't read it anymore. So how do we combat this? And I need to take this advice myself. Make a reading plan on time spent reading, as opposed to chapters finished. Sometimes a chapter will be super quick and it'll feel like a breeze, but sometimes it'll feel like you're in bumper to bumper traffic. So set apart a time that you want to devote to reading a book, a dialogue, or anything that is less about translating every single word and more about immersing into the story. And that leads me to my second point. Reading is more than just translation. And I actually view translation and reading, or I guess pleasure reading, as two separate things. It's just that translation utilizes reading. Wait, Bianca, what does that mean? That is confusing. <laughs> when you're going through a passage, dialogue, or text, whatever it is, translation is the process of going through the text word by word, figuring out what the words mean, what grammar is used, how the words fit together to make a coherent and intelligible sentence. You focus on the details to figure out what is being expressed. Pleasure reading, and maybe there's a better word to explain this concept, I just don't know what that word is, so write in the comments below if you know a better classifier. But pleasure reading is more about immersing in the story, building a connection with the world, the characters, the motivations that influence their actions. The language is a means by which you learn about people, things, and objects. What will help with vocabulary acquisition and consolidation from short-term memory to long-term memory? Well, if you've been paying attention throughout the series, and definitely do that because there will be a quiz next week. Yeah. Lol, no, not really, but the deepest memories are the ones that have multiple sensory experiences tied to them. And emotions in particular are really impactful in memory development, which is why oftentimes we remember how we feel about a particular situation, but actually forget most of the details. So pleasure reading goes beyond just understanding the language. It gives us a connection to the language and one that will increase our interest and motivations to such a degree that we'll keep wanting to read and read and therefore build up that muscle memory I talked about a few weeks back. See, all the things I talk about actually relate to each other. We love it when things fit together like a complicated a thousand piece puzzle. But the main point is this. You need both something that you're interested in as well as something that is not too challenging to start this process of reading. But how does one do that? How do you find these compelling yet comprehensible materials? And we will get to that next week where I'll talk about the differences between extensive and intensive reading. 
But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried to read a book in your target language and failed epically like I have. Maybe it wasn't on the internet for everyone to see, but tis life. Tis the life of being a part-time, not really making money YouTuber. Yeah! Um, but yeah. Reply in the comments if you're um, interested in supporting me. Um, check out my Patreon, check out Standard Mandarin Weekly. There's a 5% discount code in the description below. Um, and I will actually talk about that next week. I'm finally following through on talking about that. <laughs> um, but I will see you guys next week. Hope you have a wonderful week and bye Cut. Cut! <laughs>